Going into 2022, the world marks the end of a year of labor militancy. Hello and welcome to another episode of Thinking Out Loud and Happy New Year, my friends. Welcome to 2022 with the Entitled Millennials. 2021 is over and Jesus Christ, what a year it's been. What a year it's been. Entering into, I think now, the third year of COVID-19 with seemingly no end in sight. Now that Omicron Percy 8 seems to be here to stay, uh, running through people like crazy. You know, they're saying that everybody now is going to catch it. I'm reading, you know, conflicted reports saying that Omicron is supposedly more mild compared to other variants such as Delta and things like that. You know, it's it's been just another uh, obviously rough year, but 2021 hasn't been all bad. Uh, all year in the news, almost every single week, it seems like we saw what workers going on strike, workers joining a union, workers walking off the job, workers quitting their job in numbers that have never been seen before they're calling it the great resignation walking off quitting joining a union going on strike about their conditions you know during the beginning of the pandemic uh working class people were called essential workers those working in in restaurants and distribution in grocery and retail you know people that were called essential workers then being turned around and kicked to the side getting little to no help from the government uh, getting stiffed on every single bill that they were told that the Democrats were going to uh, get through for them. You know, no minimal wage, no health care, no proper government response to the pandemic as we approach now. I think the last number I read is 820,000 people dead over the last few years, approaching 1 million deaths and likely to get there with the new Omicron variant going around. You know, so all year 2021, workers have been walking off the job, going on strike, joining unions in record numbers. We've seen strikes at John Deere, at Kellogg's, at Nabisco, at Starbucks, Starbucks people joining a union, having the right to join a union. Um, people on Amazon walking off the job, doing shutdowns, slowdowns, everything and anything that you can imagine when it comes to labor militancy, we have seen it in 2021. Which brings me to our article right here. Amazon agrees to NLRB nationwide deal for workers to more easily organize. It says Amazon, which faces mounting scrutiny over worker rights, agreed to let its warehouse employees more easily organize in the workplace as part of a nationwide settlement with the National Labor Relations Board this month. Under the settlement, which was finalized on Wednesday, Amazon said it would email past and present warehouse workers, likely more than one million people, with notifications of their rights and would give them greater flexibility to organize in its buildings. The agreement also made it easier and faster for the NLRB, which investigates claims of unfair labor practices, to sue Amazon if it believed the company violated the terms. So now, reading this to you guys, I don't want you to think that this is some giant, all-encompassing, you know, earth-shattering victory. That's not what this is. This is just one example of the multitude of small battles that workers have won this year. We have seen workers who have gone on strike who have had a union um, achieve contracts which were fundamentally better. We've seen them even better than winning the contract itself is show a willingness to go against uh, organized labor. Uh, labor unions that have for lack of a better word, become stagnant or bureaucratic over the last several decades. We've seen workers willing to reject the recommendation of the NLRB, the National Labor Relations Board, or their union through AFL-CIO. We've seen them reject union bureaucracy, um, union suggestion in order to demand more for themselves, and I think that's huge. And now this might not seem like a big deal, uh, really, and who knows how it will be implemented. You know, Amazon is notorious for stealing wages, for squeezing every single penny out of their workers. But this alone, that the fact that nearly one million workers, many of these workers who had maybe never considered a union, had never really been involved in the labor movement, who may have never even really been class conscious to a degree, are put center stage in this 
and will be receiving information. This is in their dialogue now. This is in their dialogue now. And while this isn't a huge deal, it's not some great victory nationwide for all Amazon workers, it's a start. It's, it's a drop in the bucket for things to come. Going on with this here, guys. Amazon has previously settled individual cases with the labor agency, but the new settlement's national scope and its concessions to organizing go further than any previous agreement. Because of Amazon's sheer size, more than 750,000 people work in its operations in the U.S. alone. The agency said the settlement would reach one of the largest groups of workers in its history. And that's what I'm saying here, guys. The tech giant also agreed to terms that would allow the NLRB to bypass an administrative hearing process, a lengthy and cumbersome undertaking, if the agency found the company did not abide by the settlement. The agreement stemmed from six cases of Amazon workers who said the company limited their ability to organize colleagues. A copy was obtained by the New York Times. It is a quote-unquote big deal given the magnitude of the size of Amazon, said Wilma B. Liebman, who was a chair of the NLRB under former President Barack Obama. So you guys, like I was saying, not that this is some big nationwide contract for all Amazon workers or all logistics workers, but the fact that Amazon was brought to ruling with the NLRB that they were forced to spread information about their rights as workers to all of their staff. 750,000 workers, one of the largest groups of workers in the country. The fact that the NLRB and other labor organizations are going to be paying closer attention to the sorts of abuses and exploitations that happen in Amazon is a huge step. Little things like this, as trivial as they may seem in the grand in, in the in the grand scheme of things when we have all these incredible issues in the wealth and quality and the power that corporations have this is as small as it may be to reiterate is a victory it's something it's it's keeping labor organizing and worker militancy in the national dialogue it's telling other workers who may be frustrated who may see no recourse that hey we are being when we commit to action, when we do things, when we sue, when we join a union, when we walk out, we will be heard. We will be heard. So yeah, guys, that's great. This is just a little story here. That's all I have from the article. But I just think, you know, this happened in December. And it's just a great little cherry on top on the ice cream of labor uh, militancy that we've had this year. You know, it going into the end of the year, going into the new year. It's just a, like I was saying, a reminder that when workers advocate for themselves, when workers fight back, they can be heard and they can get concessions. And, you know, I hear a lot of people, you know, they, they sort of feel that, you know, obviously we hear this a lot, electoral politics is pointless and that's a whole discussion for another time. Uh, you know, labor militancy and strikes aren't enough. I mean, but these are people that tend to believe that nothing is ever enough, but it's big. Because for the first time in decades, workers are waking up to their situation. They are thinking in a class-conscious way. They see themselves as workers as contrasted to the capitalist owner class. And for decades, many, many people, the, the average worker in the workforce, didn't look at it that way. At least not in any meaningful way that push them or, or cause them to advocate for changes. This ruling right here, these amounts of strikes that we've seen, the, the joining of unions uh, that we're seeing, is the beginning of something. It's the beginning of a creation of class consciousness. It's planting these seeds in the minds of workers. And every time one worker goes on strike or one company goes on strike, and it's on the news, it's where they can catch it on YouTube, or even sometimes this year on, on, on mainstream media channels like CNN, when other workers see that, they start getting ideas. They start thinking, oh, John Deere got a way better contract because they went you know, and, 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 and walked out and went on strike. But I thought that was bad. I thought you just got fucked when that happened. But you're telling me that they actually got a better contract? They... They won something. I know it's not a whole lot, but they won something. Hmm. And then they start talking with their other workers. Hey, did you see that on the news? Look what's happening. 
Amazon had to do this. You see that? All these Starbucks workers joined a union. Now they're getting this wage, et cetera, et cetera. It starts people talking. It's in the national dialogue. When workers start mobilizing and organizing, start thinking in a class consciousness way, it causes a snowball effect. It causes things to you know go viral, so to speak. And I was actually just uh, listening to uh, Economic Update with Professor Richard Wolf. I don't know if you've checked out that channel, Democracy at Work. Uh, Richard D. Wolf. He's a has a PhD in economics. He's a Marxist uh, professor. Uh, he does a great channel with some other uh, intellectuals and professors that discuss the issues. And, you know, when I was doing research for this video, I was having a hard time finding statistics about, like, how many strikes have happened, how many walkouts, things like this. And then I was just listening, absentmindedly doing the dishes, and they started dropping all these statistics uh, from Economic Update. And I wanted to read a, a few of these for you. In 2021, 4 million workers walked out in October. Four million workers walked out in October, where they were calling it Striketober. Four million. That's four million people. How many, how many individuals does that affect? If four million workers are walking out, how many uh, children and neighbors? Uh, think about how much of a drastic snowball effect that creates when in one month, four million workers walk out of their job in, in, in defiance of the status quo. That's huge. In the same year, well, this one, this statistics from March of 2020, from March of 2020 until about December of last year, 2021, we saw 1,700 work stoppages that were recorded, that were just recorded. 1,700, that's a huge number. We have not seen anything like that in decades, decades. That is working people, that is the working class getting a fire under their ass, getting to the point where they are no longer willing to take it. And that's huge. Now, something else happens when workers start thinking in a class conscious way. When they start talking with each other on the job and start considering joining a union or walking out or even doing a slowdown. Even little things like when enough workers get together and they realize they're not being paid enough, they're not getting benefits and their boss is working them to fucking death. And they don't walk out, they don't join a union, they don't even quit their job, but they say, fuck it. You pay me $10 an hour, I'm doing $10 an hour of work, and that's what you're fucking getting. Slowdowns. Slowdowns are huge. And obviously we don't have a statistic about that, at least not that I could find, but if 1,700 recorded work stoppages, and that's guaranteed not all of them, you know there was more that just weren't recorded because of either a smaller number or just flew under the radar, but if 1,700 work stoppages happened, how many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of slowdowns happened that there are no record over? That's hundreds of thousands of workers slowing down purposely on the job because they're fed up cutting into the, the profit bottom line of the companies they work for. That's awesome. But going along with this, like I was saying, when workers start becoming militant, when they start thinking as a whole, as a class conscious individual, as, when they start seeing themselves as a part of a collective working class, something else starts happening. It's not just about the work stoppages or joining a union. They start thinking of themselves in a, as a political organ as a working class solidarity movement. They start leaning, they start listening to, at least many of them, more radical politics. They stop listening to the red v. blue, Republican versus Democrat, especially after the, the last two presidential campaigns and then conceding on Biden and then Biden just dropping the ball with Manchin being in the way and all this bullshit. That's a whole story for another time. But after two failed Bernie Sanders elections, after making concessions to Biden to only have nothing come out of it, couple that with workers being militant, walking out, going on strike, etc. You start to see the inklings of working class people beginning to, to listen to more radical politics, to more militant politics, to the understanding that electoral policies alone will do nothing. Unless we organize together, not just in the workplace, but politically outside of the halls of power, nothing will get done. So they start listening. They start listening to more radical politics, to socialism, to anarchism, to organizations like the IWW, the DSA, the CPUSA. And on that note, I have a couple statistics right here. It says here, Michigan DSA membership nationally jumped from 6,000 
to 100,000 members in the last five years. The nonprofit organization isn't a political party, but a volunteer-driven network of activists. Want to read that for you again. DSA membership, Democratic Socialists of America. Their membership nationally jumped from 6,000 to 100,000 members in the last five years. And I know a lot of my, a lot of people that are more radically left-leaning like I am, you know, they, they do, they put a lot of shit on the DSA. I've done a lot of good work with the DSA in the past. They're a great organization. You can have qualms with the upper echelon. It doesn't matter. You might not agree 100%. They might not be left enough for you, but here's the bottom line. You got an organization that has socialists in the name going from, what, 6,000 members to 100,000 members in just five years. And this is a dated statistic. That's amazing. That's 100,000 workers not just organizing in the workplace, organizing outside of the workplace for political activism. Uh, for political activism on their own. There's no way, other way to cut that, and that's huge. That's the sort of thing we need to be seeing. Going on with that statistic about the DSA, in the 2020 elections, 36 DSA members won offices across the country, earning more than 3.1 million votes. However, the DSA did not endorse Joe Biden, although I think that's inaccurate. That's another huge thing. We get this little trifecta building, and it's not enough yet, and I understand that. We need to realize that the that the, the left has been destroyed since the Red Scare and the Cold War. Destroyed, annihilated, obliterated. It's been blasted into a million little fucking molecules. And right now, what we are doing now, as sad as it is that we are as far behind as we are, is we are rebuilding. We are awakening the minds. We are getting working people to realize that they can organize, that they can think for themselves, that they need to have class consciousness against the capitalist class. We're having to rebuild all this stuff that countries like France or Germany never lost. You know, they didn't lose their strong socialist or communist parties. They didn't lose their labor unions like we did. So I know it could be discouraging to see things moving so slowly, but I want to drive home that what's happening is huge. And everybody that's gotten on YouTube or talked or knocked doors or made phone calls or had a conversation at work or gone on strike, done, shared a goddamn meme, anybody that's done anything that is discussing working class issues, that's discussing climate change, that's discussing corporate greed, that's presenting to the people in their lives an alternative to this capitalist system, is doing amazing work. And like I said, I know it can be discouraging because we have so far to go yet. So far to go yet. But any of you who have done anything to organize, from the smallest little thing to sharing a meme to going out on strike, I want you to understand you are the ancestor right now, man. You are building the movement from the ground up. You're doing your little part. You're clipping this little leaf that's dying on the tree. You're putting the water in the potted plant. You're doing it. You should be proud of that. And let it, let it advocate you. Let it encourage you to keep doing more. I got one more statistic for you guys here. This one's my favorite, being a dues-paying member of the Communist Party. It says, growth of the Communist Party some 2,800 new members joined the party in 2021, with 1,700 signing up since August and still counting. On top of this, People's World completed its fund drive, raising $115,000 by May Day. The party's fund drive in December's first few weeks raised $34,000 towards its $35,000 goal. If you haven't checked out People's World, definitely check that out. It's the official uh, workers' magazine of... Um, the Communist Party of America. I think it used to be called the Daily Worker. It's been around for well over 100 years. But this is huge, too. And I know these are very small numbers compared to how some other countries have it. But eight years ago, well, what, think about 2008 crash. I guess that was fucking much longer than eight years ago. I'm getting old. Jesus. But 2008 crash. Before that, it was just unbridled neoliberal capitalist hell. And nobody questioned it. And then 2008, and then you had Occupy Wall Street, and then you had all these other various movements start to build, a handful of people. And then you had the Bernie Sanders campaign 2016, 2020. Before all this, socialism was a dirty, dirty word, you fucking pinko. If you told somebody you were a socialist or a communist in 2006, they looked at you like, one, you were either brain dead or like you were the devil himself come to dupe them into some fucking otherworldly 
violin fiddle battle or some shit. You know what I mean? And now you got 2,800 people joining the Communist Party in 2021, 1,700 of them alone going under that snowball effect from August to December. That's in a country of 30, 300 something million people. I understand that, you know, 2,800 people isn't a whole lot. But you know what? That's 2,800 people, myself included, that joined this last year who aren't afraid to call themselves anti capitalist. They're not afraid to call themselves socialists. They're not afraid to call themselves communists. And that is huge because every single individual that advocates against capitalism shows something, shows that there's a possibility for something different than capitalism that is anti capitalist, that is socialist, that is communist. How many people does that one individual come in contact with that will listen? That will have at least, at the very least, their uninformed predisposition towards these concepts, to these political ideologies, shifted even the littlest bit. Maybe they think communism's evil and they've heard all this stuff about communism, but then their, their good work buddy or their neighbor says, well, I, hey, I'm a socialist. And we're not what you think we are. We just care about our community and we care about working people. You know what? Even if that person doesn't get on board, even if they don't stop hating communism... You know what happened there? That individual is forced, at least I hope so, to understand that socialists, that communists are not boogeymen. They are not the devil whispering in your ear to demand better work and wages and benefits. We are doing that, but we're not the devil. We're not the devil. They realize that no matter how the mainstream media might try to paint socialists, that might, how they might try to paint uh, worker militancy, how they might try to paint communism with the endless red scare rhetoric we've had in this country. There is an individual, a human being, not some fucking talking head on, on the news, saying that he believes in this ideology, and suddenly it becomes that much less scary, it becomes that much less unknown. So yeah, guys, that's what I have to, uh, for you. I got this short little article, I got some statistics for you, but I just want to drive home the main point. We have seen workers... Walking out of their jobs, quitting their jobs, going on strike, joining a union, talking, 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 talking to each other, thinking for themselves for the first time in decades. So that's what we have. We have worker militancy right here. What else do we have? We have working class people waking up to radicalized politics, radicalized politics, organization outside of the workplace, workplace organization. Street organization, and then what do we have? 36 DSA candidates, and you can make a toss up about that. You can have your qualms about if they're far left or not. But we also have politicians, at the very least, discussing anti capitalist settlement in the biggest capitalist hellscape on the planet the imperial core of capitalism, where it all started the fucking 20 arm tentacle monster of capitalism, the center of it. You got politicians in the center of the empire, the capitalist empire, discussing anti-capitalist sentiment, discussing workers' rights. So you, what do you got? You got the trifecta. You got a three-pronged coalition beginning, beginning. There's a little baby. We, we got a rocket right now. We got to get it to pets and give it the nipple right now. It's a baby. They could quash it. We got to keep nurturing it. But we got it. We got the beginning. We got the little ember. You got to blow on it. Just keep blowing on it. Don't let it go out. You got politicians, unheard of, discussing anti-capitalist sentiment. You got people organizing outside of the workplace and outside of the electoral system. And you got workers going on strike, building their power. That right there is the trifecta that got us the New Deal. And I know we have a lot of work to do. And I know it's discouraging when you see the numbers and you see the climate change and you see the fucking war ramping up with Russia or China. I know it's fucking scary. And I know you're wore out. I'm wore out. I've been doing this shit. I didn't have a young adult life. I had to raise a kid and got thrown into radical politics right away. And I've been doing it ever since. I'm beat. All my free time I do do it. I spent doing this show. I'm beat. I know you're tired too. But we have built something this last 10 years. Something that we should all be proud of. And let me tell you, going into 2022, this is only the beginning. 
every day we can wake up and say, what am I going to do in this New Year's revolution? What am I going to do to increase the broadcast, to take disgruntled workers and organize them? I'll tell you what you can do. You can keep talking. You can keep sharing memes. You can keep broadcasting. You can keep doing your show like I'm doing this show. You can plan to join a union. You can talk to a union rep at least. You can discredit disinformation when you see it, be it online or in person. You can join a left-leaning organization like I have. I'm a proud member of the Communist Party of the United States. But there's plenty more if you're not that crazy left commie. You can join Socialist Alternative. You can join DSA. You can join, uh, join IWW, Industrial Workers of the World. There is a left-leaning organization that will fit your shoe size. And you can join that. You pay a small due, $3, $5 a month, that those organizations will use to increase their broadcast. You can become a patron to people like me, and I'm not saying you got to do it to me. You can go to Richard Wolf, become a patron, uh, a patri- uh, patron, increase their broadcast. Every day in 2022, this is our New Year's resolution, our New Year's revolution. What are we doing to move this ball forward that we have worked so hard to build? So hard to build. And if you think it's going to temper out here in 22, 2022, I'm going to tell you right now you're wrong because we're already hitting it hard. Here in France, I got this right here. If the television media wasn't owned by billionaires, you would have seen coverage of yesterday's massive general strike in France against pension cuts. This is what Paris looks like. And the, the Parisians, the French have always had balls when it comes to being working class. And there they are with their general strike. First month of the year, getting it. You know, I'm going to tell you something. A general strike's a long way off uh, here in the United States. But if we keep working like we have, if we keep broadcasting like we have, if we keep talking like we have, if we keep doing slowdowns, if we keep joining together in fucking solidarity, you see it right here, we will have our general strike. And when we have our general strike, we will win. We will get concessions, which will only embolden us further to reform this society. But yeah, guys, that's all I have for you. I'm going on a little bit of a rant here at the end. I apologize for not making any content recently. I have been in a funk. I've been in a funk, but I, I had a, a conversation um, with a, a, a comrade of mine who's a, a member of the uh, Kenyan Communist Party uh, in Kenya there, uh, and he's doing a lot of work with the Young Communist League there. And honestly, I've been in such a funk, and then he sent me this video of him uh, uh, doing an interview and talking about what he does with uh, younger people over there in Kenya. Uh, you know, in, in a in a third world country, and I don't mean to uh, disrespect Kenya at all. It's a beautiful country, beautiful people. I don't I don't mean it like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and guess uh, my comrade Brian in Kenya has had a much more difficult life than I have, and has many more challenges day to day than I have. And uh, he don't get burned out. He don't get discouraged. He don't get tired of talking, educating. So he sent me that interview of him, and it really encouraged me to get back in front of this camera. So I'm hoping to keep it rolling, guys. Hoping to keep it rolling. But again, guys, uh, happy New Year. Ha- I hope your New Year's resolutions go well. I hope you do what you can to encourage the New Year's revolution. 2022, guys, we got another hard year ahead of us. It ain't going to be sunshine and rainbows. It's going to be militancy. It's going to be trench fucking warfare for working people. But I hope you got some heart left because we are going to see some victories this year, guys. But yeah, guys, that's all I have for you. As always, I love you very much, and I'll speak with you again soon. Bye. Yes, I know.